all is right with the world. Well, not exactly. It is raining right now at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, and that washed out uh, the first day of practice here uh, for the 108th running of the Indianapolis 500. But at the very least, we did get some running in today. Uh, cars were going the right direction on the oval. Kyle Larson got his first uh, taste of playing in traffic here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway at high speeds and went quite fast, by the way. And cars almost went 230 miles an hour on uh, what was really a great day for speed. So I won't keep you waiting. Let's, uh, let's catch up with the boys at uh, Aero McLaren because uh, certainly Kyle Larson set headlines today, but uh, we haven't heard from these guys in a while. So let's hear from them right now. Uh, yeah, the, the, honestly, the first time in traffic, I think my tires were, were fresh, so like it didn't feel, there wasn't much like of a balance difference for, between clean air to dirty air, but then the, the second time, like when Newgarden passed me, I got like, I was already kind of tight before he got to me, and then I, he passed me, and I, I tried to like build a run back to him, and I got super tight, so I don't know like if that is... Like that magnitude is real or, or not either. So still, you know, a lot left to learn about it. You know, because the packs are so small, and the the runs, like the the amount you run on a tire, is is still short. Um, so like, I think as you probably get in the month of May, when there's more rubber on the track and all that. So, yeah, yeah, thanks. And uh, I just think there's still way more to learn. I haven't studied a ton, a ton, but you know, I've looked at enough data where it's like, okay, now I just got to get in the car. So. There's still questions and stuff when I get in there, reminders that I need to get um, between weight jackers and bars and what all that stuff means. But um, no, I think I'm just like, I was just like ready to go, like ready to get in it. I'm a pretty relaxed person too, so I, I wasn't too nervous or stressed about anything. So just uh, happy to finally kind of be out there and like get to be around other cars because I've just always for the last year and a half I've been wondering what that what that looks like or feels like. Awesome. And he's he's in my mind one of the best people behind the steering wheel in the world. So it's a, it's really cool to have him as part of the Aero McLaren organization. I've known him since we were kids in go-karts, um, being both from Northern California. So it's for me, it's an honor just to share a um, weekend, month, day, whatever with him. And what's his feedback like? I know he's quick at 226 already. I haven't talked to him yet. I know during ROP, they were like, how's it going? He's like, fine. And then he did his next step. How's it going? Fine. Next step. Fine. So, like, I'm sure it's still fine. <laughs> Kyle Larson, 226. Nice toe lap. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then we'll go into results, and then I'll do the rest of the interviews. So you heard it from the Aero McLaren boys, uh, certainly a lot of uh, talk about Kyle Larson across social media today. He certainly is going to be the storyline, uh, the main storyline of the 108th running of the Indianapolis 500 from a mainstream perspective. But let's take a look at the 34 cars that took time today. The 35th entry that we are expecting from Able Motorsport did not materialize for this particular test. We're still expecting them to enter the race. The question of whether R.C. Innerson or perhaps another driver will be driving the number 50 car, that remains to be seen. But here is our 34 competitors. And it's defending race winner Joseph Newgarden up top at over 228 miles an hour, almost 229. He was fastest in the test last year at just over 227. Probably a good sign for Newgarden. Kyle Larson, the rookie here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, at least in an IndyCar. In car number 17, the Papaya and Hendrick Blue for the 226 mile per hour lap. He turned 47 laps on the day. Kyle Larson uh, still coming to grips with the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, but if coming to grips means you're second, that's probably pretty good. Scott Dixon, who you'll hear from later on in this video, set a 226 mile per hour uh, lap, as well as Alex Pelot, Ganassi still fast here. Andretti, uh, Andretti Global, almost at Autosport, uh, fast with Colton Herta. They were quite good last year. Heard of the first car in the 225 mile per hour bracket. Scott McLaughlin, a sneaky six there for the number three car. And Ed Carpenter, we always talk about him and his team here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. He got some laps during the eclipse on Monday and he uh, put that to good use at 224 miles an hour in P7. 
Kyle Kirkwood, who was so strong here last year until he got upside down in P8. Christian Rasmussen, the second fastest rookie and probably the fastest true rookie here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway Oval. Felix Rosenquist in car number 60 for Meyer Shank Racing. He was fast here last year, and Meyer Shank knows how to win this race. Santino Ferrucci, the AJ Foyt, resurgent AJ Foyt team here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, clocks in P11. Uh, Renus VK, another of the Ed Carpenter stable at 223 miles an hour in 12th. Marcus Armstrong, the rookie here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway in Lucky 13. Marcus Erickson, the 2022 Indianapolis 500 winner there in 14th position for car number 28. Entretti Global is the entrant this year. Linus Lundquist, another rookie, another driver for Chip Ganassi Racing in P15. Net 223 miles an hour. Then Will Power in P16, the slowest today of the Penske drivers. Marco Andretti had to take a refresher test, and so he didn't really get to show true speed. Craig Hampson is on his box this year, 222 miles an hour for Marco. Pato Award in 18th spot, also at 222. Graham Rahal, who was bumped from the field last year, at least driving for Rahal, he's at the 222 mark. Christian Lundgaard in car number 45 for Rahal, also it uh, or just below 222 miles an hour at 221.8. Connor Daly for uh, Dryan Reinbold with Cusick Motorsports in the 24 car, and Takuma Sato, who you'll also hear from later on in this video, in the number 75 for Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan, 221.8. He Last time he drove for them, well, or the second to last time he drove for them, he won. Stingray Rob for AJ Foyt Racing. That's a car to watch at some point. Certainly the AJ Foyt team, extremely fast. Elio Castro Neves in a brand new car you'll hear more about later on in this video. Car number 06 uh, in your program. Number one in some people's hearts, 221 miles an hour. Romain Grosjean in uh, a Hunkos Hollinger car that was painted white today. Interesting. Perhaps a new chassis for Romain Grosjean as well. Callum Eilat for uh, Aero McLaren in P27. Alexander Rossi, his teammate, right behind him. Catherine Legg was announced yesterday for Dale Coyne Racing with Rick Ware Racing. She's in 29th spot on the time charts. Pietro Fittipaldi for Ray Hall, just behind her. Nolan Siegel, uh, another rookie today, uh, set a slightly faster time in the second practice session than his rookie orientation, but still only at 217 miles an hour. Augustine Canapino only turned 13 laps at a fastest speed of 216 miles an hour. Kiffin Simpson, a rookie for Chip Ganassi Racing, is in that 33rd spot, only turned laps during the rookie orientation practice, though he turned uh, 80 laps uh, during that session. A lot of laps for Kiffin Simpson. And then uh, Ryan Hunter Ray, uh, 206 miles an hour, but only turned seven laps. Uh, you'll hear from him a bit later. They had some problems at Dry and Reinbold Racing today. So you've seen the speeds from the drivers. Let's hear from them uh, at the bullpen earlier today. I mean, it feels like last year. Uh, obviously, the weather is quite a bit different. Uh, there's not a lot of pack running out there, so we haven't really had a chance to, come, you know, go out and play with, with everyone. But. Um, there's so much more downforce than what it is during the month just because of the weather. Uh, so like the cars right now kind of feel a little planted. No matter what you do, it's, it's, it's sometimes a bit harder to get some reads, especially if the car doesn't really move around as much in traffic and stuff like that. So um, we're just going through our program, you know, seeing what, what we find that can work, not work, and just bring it into the month. Just kind of have a bit more of a, of a clear read of what direction we want to go uh, because it, it you know, supposedly already is a very strong car, but it doesn't mean that other people are standing still. You know, everybody is working on it, so it's a uh, slightly different changes. It's lighter at the rear. Um, I'm not aware if we're doing the new aero screens. Uh, I know Long Beach we are, but are they carried on through the rest of the year? They should yeah. be. Okay. They're not. Well, they're not going to be used on the old lighter. They're yeah, not. not the yeah. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so. We're all learning to go. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. It's, Work in progress. The car's still 20 pounds lighter, though. They're, they're, they're yeah, pounds, I think, right? yeah, it's like 35 pounds okay. lighter at the rear, so or 25 pounds. Much of a difference? Can you feel that? It's, it's really hard to feel with the weather like this. I think it'll come to life when it starts getting hotter, and when the rears really start screaming, that's where I feel like we'll, we'll probably feel a little bit of that rear help, I would say. Um, but it, it wouldn't come with, you know, I guess a balance shift, so you're gonna have to 
to move some stuff around, either COP or fronts or whatever. We just had some electrical issues, um, you know, some uh, some some this funky with the throttle, um, with the throttle pot sensor. So we were trying to sort that out. Thought we had it sorted, went back out, and uh, it just would not con stay consistent. Wouldn't go over about 75% throttle. So for some reason, so we went pushed it back to the garage and. Hope to uh, figure it all out there. The Chevy engineers, as well as our crew, are there just trying to trying to get to the bottom of it. So it's not as simple as what it used to be when you used to have a cable going straight to the engine. You can actually see it work. So uh, hopefully we'll get through that. And that's that's kind of what this test is for, though. Pato talked a little bit about the conditions uh, not really being May-like. Uh, you know, how much can you actually gain from a test like this, or is it just shaking down things, making sure nothing's leaking? Yeah, for us, it's. I mean, really, we'd like to get a good read on on the mechanical package of the car. It is heavy today, meaning we, you know it's cool. A lot of downforce on the cars, but for us, it's a, it's getting through what we just had. Right, we had an electrical issue. All new components from Chevy, new specifications from IndyCar. There's a lot to kind of work around. So it's just it's getting these things sorted, getting the group together again, getting that communication down, hit the ground running once uh, the sun's out. In May. Ah, oh, yeah, it's great to be back. It's great to be a Speedway. Uh, not watching, but it's actually driving. So it was a lot of fun. And now um, everything's new. We gotta just, um, you know, kind of like even that it's we have um, same seat and stuff like that. The car is brand spanking new. The whole team doing a phenomenal job for being everybody new. And um, yeah, just keep uh, adjusting here and there. Uh, so far, running no issues with the electronics. That's, those are the big biggest uh, difficult when you have a new, brand new car. Right now, preparation is being flawless. Cars were uh, your cars were high on the uh, no tow times I saw. Uh, that's got to fill you with a little bit of confidence. Yes, no question. Uh, we're trying to just uh, to do comparison, obviously, because this is a brand new car. We want to make sure all the, you know, the pieces, the, the the wings, the everything that we do, it's a true. We don't have any uh, problems. I guess everyone already have that because their cars are not brand new. So for us, it's important to this use this test to make sure the equipment what we know about the equipment. Even if there is something, we need to understand exactly what the equipment does so that when we come back for the month of May, we, we, we use those tools to uh, make it happen. So that's interesting because in previous years you had used your Indy 500 winning chassis. This is a new one. Brain new, brain spanking new. It feels good. Uh, like you said, they were good here last year, especially in the race. I think they had good race cars. They were lacking a little bit in qualifying. Uh, but they put in a lot of efforts in the off season on you know different departments to really improve. So I feel like there's a lot of focus and it's been a lot of focus in the building around the, the Speedway cars and you know the 500. So I'm I'm pretty confident. You know it's still very early. I've only had a couple of runs, but so far it feels good. Well, first of all, it felt really good. I mean, obviously lots of familiar faces in the team, but the uh, half of that has been the uh, the new faces. So. Uh, uh, and uh, obviously, you know, 75 boys uh, gathering, you know, from all over. So uh, obviously, we had a new team in the inside, and um, but good to be uh, good to be back in the team, and uh, nice to to working with uh, my uh, uh, engineer Eddie Jones, who worked uh, for years and years together. So very happy. And today is really uh, initial run with uh, all the system checks, and uh, you know, wish we had a a bit more programming going, but. At the moment, I'm pretty happy. Now, over the course of the winter, there's the lots of different uh, program and updates for, for the team. You know, team obviously had a, since last year. You know, they, they, they moved forward quite a lot. So uh, I'm, uh, I'm I'm very uh, uh, how can I say optimistic with the uh, coming uh, coming months and uh, very happy. You mentioned last year, obviously a struggle for Ray Hall, Letterman, Lanigan, but it seems like every time you get to a team, the performance level seems to go up. What do you contribute to a race team here at the Speedway to make them go so fast? Well, <laughs> we will see. The, just the effort of everyone in, everyone's in on the walk and hard work and uh, just a matter of the, all the details. But the full concept over the course of the winter, we discussed the team quite a lot and the team made a huge jump, you know, since last year. So uh, happy to see that. And uh, and obviously I, I try to help the team in any circumstance. So, uh, yeah, we, we will see, you know. But at the moment, I think uh, Graham is uh, entirely really happy, you know, very happy, you know, since last year car to, to jump into this year car. So uh, it's a good positive. So what is it like to put together an indie only team and run for that versus what you have been used to the last few years of running a full-time team? What are the challenges and are there any advantages to running as an indie only team? I don't think there is any advantage, but uh, try to minimize uh, 
disadvantage, let's put it this way. Um, the team has a great resource which allowed me to do the uh, special deal, you know, for the 500. Now, of course, the season is always to get, the, you know, it's a good uh, rhythm and the momentum, which we won't have it. But at least it's a 500, has got more opportunity to testing and uh, for the boys to have more opportunity time gathering together so that's the most important part and uh, hopefully we can, we can be up to the speed before May. To your point about the conditions, would this test maybe be a little bit more valuable to you guys if you did maybe the first week of May? Oh, you mean going back to like an old uh, traditional Ab schedule? Absolutely, <laughs> Scott, absolutely. Uh, I didn't, that's above my pay grade, man. <laughs> so, uh, and so I mentioned it, teased it a little bit, uh, talking about the Meyer Shank Racing Team. Elio Castroneves mentioned that he's got a new chassis in that uh, segment. And uh, that, of course, opened the question up. Uh, Elio has run his Indy 500 winning chassis the last couple of years here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Uh, so I asked the Meyer Shank folks, uh, where is that chassis right now? And here's a little bit of a, a nugget you probably only got here uh, that uh, Tom Blomquist is actually driving the 2021 winning chassis. So, uh, and, and Tom was also, I believe, fastest on the no tow charts with that machine. Uh, so driver and car, uh, or perhaps a driver and car to watch, uh, that might be a bit of a sleeper, at least on day one here, a Tom Blomquist in the Meyer Shank Racing uh, number 66, uh, which of course used to be the 06 back in the day. So uh, yeah, unfortunate that this race, uh, that this practice day didn't quite uh, live up to expectations. I think uh, everybody in the field kind of wanted it to be a, a, a long day of running. Although you heard it from most of the drivers, including Scott Dixon, which I appreciated him uh, dodging my question, although I think he kind of answered it with his expression. Um, you know, not necessarily representative uh, weather here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, not what we're at least used to in modern times in May. Certainly it seems a bit more hot and muggy these days in May rather than cold and overcast like it is today. Um, you know, I, I, I've said it before, I'll say it again, from a promotional standpoint, and perhaps now, as well, uh, talking to the drivers, maybe from a setup standpoint, maybe we should do this in May instead of April because, you know, there's supposed to be a day tomorrow where they're going to test. Um, I suspect it's going to be a washout, and then the teams are off to Long Beach and Barber and the Indy Road Course before we start thinking about the oval track again. So um, this is probably the end of the first practice day for the 108th Indianapolis 500, and uh, it'll be a month before we see these cars back on the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. But anytime you get to see this, uh, these uh, incredible race cars go around here at 230 miles an hour. Uh, it just brightens my day, even if uh, even if the sun isn't out. So, yeah, it's it's always it's always good. I always feel like uh, feel like uh, this this track just brings out my A game. I just feel more virile and uh, revitalized and all those uh, all those words when uh, cars are going around the oval here so uh, thank you guys so much for watching uh, should be a fun month can't wait to cover it for you guys I guess this is the the tease uh, for the uh, for the month ahead so thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video